Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and bring your beer with you. Uh, for sure if you are over the age. Because, uh, you know, there is a halal beer. Yeah. And there's halal whiskey. And there's halal black label. Bud Light. Budweiser. Hennekin. You know, Islamic cult <coughs> is the most awkward silly stupid religion if we can call it a religion and today i will show you an example this is a very well known abdul for the muhammadan supposedly he's a abdul big abdul you know and he want to tell us something very important you know And me myself, I learned my religion from the Abdul. I mean, those are the ones on the TV because they are there to teach you how to be, how to go to heaven. Those are the guys. That, this is the way. I mean, this is the this is the way to go to heaven. Sorry if my voice is not good. I was singing because I was drinking beer. So let us see. Ali Ibrahim saying there is no. There is no Ali. Ali, okay. Ali is saying there is no halal beer. Well, Ali, people can go right now and search on Google and they will find there's halal beer. You Muslims have halal for everything. Even there's a store, is you know, halal sex toys. Don't make me make a video about it. Halal sex toys. If you don't believe me, I can do a little search and I can show it to you. And this is why I'm saying Islam is the most awkward, funny cult. In the appearance, Islam is something uh, in details is something else. Halal vibration exploring an X-rated Muslim uh, sex shop. <laughs> what makes sex shop halal? <laughs> UK first halal sex shop open online. <laughs> so uh, Ali, you are you know you know you are talking to Christian friends, right? So don't don't go there. I mean those things. No, we don't have this. Don't, those you can say you say them to somebody who have a blue eyes. You know somebody do not know Arabic. He don't have the, the, the knowledge of the this this uh, funny stupid religion. You can say no as much as you want, but not with us. We don't have halal beer. We don't have halal beer. Yeah, right. Sheikh Tel Ali, our friend here, who is uh, watching us, do you, Muhammadan, have halal beer? Beer. Not all beer is haram. <laughs> brother not all beer is haram brother <laughs> oh boy uh. Ali are you there not all beer <clears throat> is haram <coughs> <coughs> Today my voice is not good, I don't know why. Maybe I drank too much coffee. Beer. Not all beer is haram. Not all beer. So we have... Are you drinking beer now? What? Not all beer is haram and he grab a drink. <laughs> okay, tell us about it more. <coughs> beer that is prohibited and they have beer that is halal <coughs> how do we judge how we judge we do that through the end result oh. if we have a beer that is called non-alcoholic and it has 
0.3 or 0.5% alcohol. In Look, what the heck? So how it is non-alcoholic and it have 0.3 or 0.5? I mean, guys, did you hear this? This religion make you genius. This drink is non-alcoholic. It have 0.3 or 0.5 alcohol. But you just said it's not alcoholic. So is it alcoholic or not? As long as you have alcohol, it is alcoholic. And he will explain to you more. Just listen carefully. Things will get more complicated later. Alcoholic. And it has <coughs> 0.3 or 0.5% alcohol in it. Doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. Brother, six packs. Brother, you take six a drink from this, you take the seven, you're drunk. <laughs> Have you taken a COVID vaccine? No, my friend, I am an I am a Middle Eastern. If, if COVID come to me, COVID will die. I can show you a video actually. Once a mosquito, she did bite me. She died immediately, brother. What are you talking about? You know, we are Arab. Don't you see? We are the one who come with this genius religion. No COVID can affect us. No mosquito can kill us. Like, come on, what are you talking about? Al Kazafi is my cousin, Saddam Hussein is my uncle. Are you asking me to take COVID-19 vaccine with her? What's wrong with you? This guy is crazy. Something wrong with you. You are not thinking perfectly, you know, like we are the Arab, we are the best in the world. Shakespeare is uh, my cousin. His name, his real name is Shakespeare. You know, do you think Shakespeare, he need a COVID-19 vaccine? I'm like, come on. Especially he's dead now, so he will never need it anyway. <laughs> we go back to our topic. So if you drink six, six bags, it doesn't affect you? Really? 0.3 <clears throat> or 0.5% alcohol in it. Doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. Hence, it is halal. Because the Prophet gave us the parameters, alayhi salatu salam, of what is halal and what is haram. When he said in an authentic hadith, whatever intoxicates in large quantities, then little of it is haram. So if someone drinks a glass of champagne and he's not intoxicated, he does not have the right to say, it's halal for me. I'm just a social drinker. They were throwing a toast, so I just drank half a glass. And it did not intoxicate me. I said, Akhi, if you, if you drank or if you were to drink a large quantities of it, like five or six glasses, would you become intoxicated? He said, definitely, I'd become wasted. In this case, a drop of it, one single drop, is haram for you. Look at this stupid, awkward cult. He just said, when he described the halal beer, that doctors, they say, if you drink seven packs of it, you are fine. Correct? And then he compared it to champagne. And he says, if you drink six of it, are you going to drunk? He said, yes. So the same. So it's about the quantity, you know, of the drink you take will make you drunk at the end. It doesn't matter what, what, what drink you are drinking. Ali, Ali, we will go to the verse you want me to read. We will go there. And later you will be sorry. If we go to 590, trust me, you will be sorry. Don't push me there, Ali. Trust me, you will die laughing at 590. Like, come on. Ali, why you are, you know, Ali, are you paid by, 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 by a Christian prince? I mean, if I want to laugh at Muhammad, I will go to chapter 5, verse, verse number 90. 
Well, you are doing that, your prophet brother. You know what? I'm going to go and do what Ali he wished for. This is what you get. It's what you wish for. Here we go. Brother. And now don't tell me I don't want to read it. And don't tell me, please don't show it. Okay. And I will show you in a second why you will regret asking me to show you this verse. All you who believe, drunk and gambling, etc., and playing games, etc., though this abomination of shaitan. But is it this is your prophet? Copying one of our church father saying that in First Corinthians chapter six, verse number ten. Your prophet is a fraud. Even he copy it word by word. Do you see it, Ali? What do you say, Ali? And guess what? You Muslim, you keep attacking Paul and say that Paul was an evil man. When your city Quran is copying Paul, word by word, and actually, Paul is more clear in the verse. He said, those who do those things, they don't go to heaven. Where in the Quran it says, those who do things, they will not go to heaven? Show me. Can you show me? So here actually, because you mentioned this, you expose your God, that your Muslims are not really conservative in your religion, Adultery, you go to heaven. Sex with the children, you go to heaven. Sex with watermelon, you go to heaven. Sex with the child, you go to heaven. Being drunk, you go to heaven. Anything, you go to heaven. But in the first Corinthian, it says it clearly, that those who do those things, which means if they don't repent, they're drunken, there's people who live, you know, all day they are drunk. The greedy, the thieves, the abusers, and the, those all those things go to your prophet, by the way. He was a drunk, he's a thief, you, you, I mean, the, the, the whole rest. So when a Muslim he says to us, Show us, please, chapter 5, verse number 19. Did you prove to us that Islam is from God? Let me show you how we laugh now. According to your God, chapter 5, verse number 91, that Shaitan, he used those things to make you hate each other. Correct? The verse in the front of you, and this is the one you choose for me. But isn't it your God in the Quran? He prays alcohol, saying it's wonderful, it's great, it's amazing. Actually, it's a miracle from Allah. So how alcohol is it from shaitan and then alcohol is a sign from Allah and it's a good privilege, good good deeds, it's a good uh, uh, provision. Your prophet and his companion, they used to be drunk 24 hours, 7 days a week. We have Mara Bara saying, Christian pagan, 
I don't know who is the pig in here. It is you, my friend, who kiss a black stone which is in the shape of a vagina. Not me. You see, here you notice, by the way, that Muslims always they accuse you of things. In fact, they are the one who does those things. They say that wine is haram, but Allah, he promised you a river of wine in heaven. So, if wine is coming from the devil, why Allah is promising me the work of the devil in the heaven? And here, this is another idiot. Saying a Christian pagan, black stone kisser, a guy who bow down in front of a stone. He kisses stone, and he believe if he touch a stone, it erases his sin. And yet he talk about paganism. You see, the Muslim they go, they make fun of the Hindus, of the Buddhas, or everybody. They are supremacists. But in fact, there's nobody pagan as they are. All your religion is based on stones. All your religion is based on the stone. We don't worship the cross. And we don't believe that the cross will forgive us. You Muslims, in my, actually, in my belief, there's nothing that's called the cross. Cross is a, a tool of punishment. Just because Jesus, he died there, so we respect what Jesus did to us. We don't respect the, the piece of wood. You Muslim believe that the black stone, if you touch it, erase your sin. You Muslim, your prophet told you that the black stone is going to have eyes and tongue, literally, not metaphorically, and will intercede for you in the day of judgment. You Muslim believe that the black stone is the helper between you and Allah, the middle, the middle person. Actually, the same shaykh we showed you here, in other video, if you remember, what was the title of the video? I forgot. <clears throat> uh, I think it was about Mushrikeen. He said that the Mushrikeen believe in the same thing the Muslim believe in. Exactly the same thing. Let me find the video for you. I forgot the name of the video. Um, let us see. Here we go. Let us see if we get it here. Oh, this is my video. I, I searched for it. I found my video. Hold on. So now I need to find where the shaky took. Hold on. Okay, this is my video. I could not find the video of the shake himself directly, but it's my video. It's okay. It will do the job. Let us see. We want to hear the guy talking. All right. This quote unquote renowned scholar. What? You see here, like, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I want to just, I want to go where he speak, not where I talk. Bless us with this gift. Okay, hold on. I'll talk for you, my friend. Is that the prophet who says, in the case of murder, free for free? Let me see if I can Is find out. Can we invoke prior to the Prophet? Um, I'm trying to find what was the name of the video. Hold on. I think I think it was about invoking hold on and then you will see your shake saying clearly that the kuffar are the same as you both of you you invoke god idols beside allah both of you worship the same god allah 
Uh, let us see. Maybe this one here. So Okay, let's see this one. Has the intention to call them as gods. So, what is the ruling on that? First of all, do not take knowledge from the likes of me or the likes of him. Take knowledge from real scholars. This <laughs> Here you see another, another side of the stupidity of this religion. This guy on TV to teach you about Islam, and now he's saying to you, well, you know what, turn off your TV, don't watch me because I'm an idiot. Don't take knowledge from me. Take it from the scholars. Did you come and do you see stupidity? So if you are saying to them, don't take knowledge from me, are you, what are you doing there? Continue, Abdul. Madness. Quote, unquote, renowned scholar. He's a da'i. He does not qualify to be a he's, scholar. He's a guy. He's a student of knowledge. Hmm. So there are so many of us. We are fortunate to be famous because Allah has blessed us with this the American. gift. I'm telling you this. When you my, want fr to my friend, the one who blessed you with the internet is the American. Specifically the Pentagon. Specifically the army of USA. It's not Allah. So don't go there. Even the internet now became from Allah. Here we go. The hijacked the internet and the internet now became Islamic, blessed from Allah. Knowledge, proper knowledge, especially when it comes to Aqeedah. <laughs> Don't go to Tom, Dick and Harry. Don't hmm. go to people who keeps keep on. What do you mean? We cannot go to the tit boy? The tit boy, SMC. You know, me, me, fifi, so, so, do, do. No, we cannot. Oh, okay. Switching in the. Uh, uh, so, those who adopt. Yeah, this video obviously somebody did editing for it. I mean, this guy, what? You see, this guy who copied this video, he, he, this is what they do copy, paste. But they cut, they don't copy, paste, they copy, cut. I mean, why you don't put the video of the guy as it is? for all, most of their life, a particular opinion. Then they change to a second opinion. Like Muhammad, Mut'a is halal. Then Mut'a is haram. Then Mut'a is halal. Then Mut'a is <laughs> Well, give them some time and they will change to a third opinion. R right, yeah. Are these people worthy of being followed? No way. In Matters of Aqeedah? No way. Definitely not. Definitely. Now, Mehwish says that he says that it's permissible. I doubt he says it's permissible. I would suggest or presume that he said it is not shirk, but it is prohibited. Because if he says that it is permissible, then he would have gone to the dark side, hmm. which is the super Sufis who believe and if you ask the Muslims, is the Sufi Muslims? They say yes. Now the Sufi are not Muslims. All the, all the people in Turkey are not Muslims, no more. They are not. The Shishan, they are not Muslims. Anyone is Sufi, half of Egypt is not, is, you know, Mimi, the, the, the dead boy, the dead boy. Oh, I have a party in my backyard. Wow, look at this. Four eagles. What? Let me record them. Hold on. Come on, buddy. He hide behind the tree. I don't know if you can hear the eagles, guys. Can you hear them? They are making the noise. Look, 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 look. What's happening here? How come too many of them? Oh boy. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, brother and sisters, uh, sorry for like, you know, they, they disturb my thought. Uh, you know, they are beautiful, beautiful birds, you know. And by the way, eagle is from Allah. Brother. Yeah. 
And he's a Muslim. Worship truly the graved people. But he thinks that it's a sinful thing, but it's not shirk. And why would someone say that? Nowadays, we are in an era where people compromise their religion. Mm. So in order to gather as many people around us and to gather as many followers, being a tolerant person, advocating of tolerance, being okay with all strands See? of the society. That's what they do. They compromise their own religion. So they try See? to walk a very thin line. Did you hear it, people? And they say, we cannot label people as mushrik because there's so many of them. Well, Allah Azza wa labeled them in the Quran when he said, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مشركون. The vast majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth, would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. Did you hear it? Muslims, they compromise these days lying about their religion in order to gain more people to join Islam. So when a Muslim, he come in like a speaking corner or etc., he, de he declaim all true things about Islam. Like when you debate them, do Allah have body part or who said so? They deny it. In order to win an argument, even if it's temporarily, just to fool the crowd. That's what the Sheikh was saying. And this is true. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Did you hear it? The belief in Allah is the same as the belief of the pagan and the idol worshippers. Islam is the same, same religion. Listen carefully. This is not me who said that. Hmm. Inhabitants of earth would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Mm. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, See? that Allah is the giver of life and death, See? that Allah is the creator, See? that Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. Exactly. It's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so-and-so differed with scholars so-and-so. Go to the sources. In the beginning of the video, he says to us, don't listen to me, go to the scholars. Now he's saying to you, don't take, go to the scholars, listen to me. <laughs> Stupidity is amazing. So the pagan, did you hear it? Where is the guy, Mara? Mara Bara? Pagan are Muslims. They worship the same God. They worship Allah. They believe he is the provider. They believe he is the creator. They believe, they believe, they, they, this is the pagan, the pagan. You must them call them pagan and they are Muslims like you. So what are different? The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Do you hear it? This is their belief, but associated others with him. The Muslim today, they associate it with the Arab associate before the black stone and the Kaaba. When Muhammad says the black stone and the Yemeni corner, whoever of, the, of you touch them, it erase his sin. Well, this is the same as the Arab too, the pagan. You Muslims are pagan too. Let us see how that will work. Let us go to the Hadith. No, I'm typing, hold on. Let us see what the hadith 
says and why Muhammad he ordered the Muslims to touch those two corners the black stone here we go so the Sheikh he just said that the pagan before Islam they worship Allah they believe he's the creator, he's the provider, etc. Everything the Muslim believe. Additional to that, they take with Allah a helper, idols, to intercede for them to Allah. That is the black stone, as you see, and this is the Yemeni corner. Now, the Yemeni corner is a different story, which is higher stupidity from Muhammad. There's a temple in Yemen. It's called the Temple of Al Makkah. You can search it in Google. And this temple is to worship the moon god. Before historians, they used to think, and this is why I say, not always what historians they say to you is true, that this was the temple of the sun. And at the end, they were able to discover the, the words, like you know, the language. They were able to read it and they come to the conclusion that this is the temple of the sun sorry temple of the moon this is a temple built, built by the Sabian and this is where Islam is coming from let me show you They call it Barwan Temple. This is other name, but the, the, the known name is uh, Al Maqa. And this is what is left of the temple. I mean, this website you have to sign in and you have to log in, blah, 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 you know. But anyway, it is for the moon god. For the moon god. And this is again proof that the one who wrote the Quran is an idiot. Let us see here. You can search, I mean, you can search yourself, you will find it's all over, you know. Goddess Al Makkah, and this is where the name Mecca, by the way, is coming from, most likely. It's a copy of the original temple. So the, the, the uh, you see here they use the Q letter because in Yemen some words they pronounce like a letter K they say Qa so this is Al Makkah Al Makkah the temple of Al Makkah so the Arab they wanted to have a competition instead of going all the way to Las Vegas to play in the machine why we don't have a machine here when we do gambling here? So what they did, they went to a temple of Al Makkah and they brought some rocks from Al Makkah and they put it in the Kaaba. And this is why Muhammad saying, whoever touched those two, the black stone, and the Yemeni corner, it erases sin. This is the Yemeni corner. And you will notice here that the corner, this corner, the stones there are not in harmony with the other stones. They are different. And this is why the Kaaba here in this area is stripped. Why? Because it's of necessity. You have to expose it because people need to touch it. And if they touch it, your sin will be erased. And yet a Muhammad, and he come to you, and he said to you, pagan. 
even they will put police around those stones because some Muslim they come and they bring little knives and they try to steal little rocks from it. And people fight over to get the clothes and touch the stones because everybody when I sent to a race, child molesters, criminals, you name it. Same exactly for the black stone, which is made in the shape of a vagina. And even the Islamic book says that women before Islam, they used to go around the Kaaba, especially women who have no kids, they cannot have kids or they want to get kids, but they could not. When they have their period, they place their hand inside their private part and they grab whatever blood they can get from there and they place their hand inside the black stone citing a certain prayer and this is why the tafsir book says and the black stone used to be white like milk but the sin of mankind made it black and he explained why women they put their hand inside the, the, the black stone because those women believe they could not have babies because of their sin a sin they did and yet the Muslims always, they throw things at you. They say you are a drunk person when Muhammad, he and his followers, they are drunk. They say to you, you are pagan when Islam is nothing but paganism. Everything in Islam is a religion of stones. There's a big sheikh, his name is Al-Qaradawi. He says, I think it was Al-Qaradawi, he said that. Uh, he said, what, what, uh, when, I, when uh, in interview, he said, why in Islam everything is a stone? Like we have to kiss the black stone, we go around the stone. Uh, we have touched the stone and, and, and even when we do a, a go to shaitan he said this is what Islam is about it's not up to you Islam is going around the stone kissing a stone bowing down in front of a stone and throwing stones at shaitan this is Islam but in the same time the Muslims they accuse you that you are pagan even they are the one who bow down in front of stones And they are the one who cry in front of the stones. And they are the one who believe that touching stones will erase their sin. Why kissing a black stone, but not kissing a woman, pagan? Ali, I think you're being stupid here, because my friend, I don't wanna call you stupid because stupid ones can be insulted by calling you stupid. Uh, I don't know how Muslims think. I mean, what, what this guy here? What, what did you eat? I think this is the influence of camel urine, which your prophet he prescribed for you. Why kissing a black stone is pagan, but not kissing a woman, my friend? If your dad did not kiss your mom, we will not have a stupid one like you. A man he kisses a woman because this is sexual. Or he like her, or maybe they say she is his mother. But kissing the black stone for what? And the black stone is in the shape of a vagina. <laughs> I mean, where do those people come to us from? <clears throat> ah, here we go. Mara, she said, or he, I don't know. Kissing your mom does not mean you worship her. Are you Muslim believe that your black stone is your mom? Huh? Look, look, look how desperate they are. Look at the answers. And remember, they are the one who opened the topic and now they are trying to close it down. Kissing your mom is pagan? Is the black stone your mom? I mean, do you see how silly and how confused they are and they do not know what to say? Is kissing your mom is haram? Is kissing your mom is pagan? Or the, my mom is my mom, the black stone is what? My mom, she did feed me, she carried me, she hold me, she nursed me, she did all things to me. My mom is not a stone. Because they cannot explain their paganism, 
which they throw at us. Remember, they are the one who throw those things at us. Look, this guy, this guy, Marabara. I don't know this name is coming from where. It's like coming from the moon. Marabara. CP Christian Pagan. Look, they are the one who opened the topic and now they try to close it. But kissing is not required. No, it's required. It's a big time required. Let me prove you wrong, my friend. You see, Muslims are really silly when they try to defend the religion. Why this man is doing it? Because the prophet says, touching them erase your sins, so it is required. It became an act of worship in order to erase your sin. So don't tell me it's not required. And as long as it's not required, why the prophet he did it? And why he said to you, if you touch them, it erase your sin? It's not required as you say, it. but as you see, no, it's required because it is the way to erase your sin. Right? Why do you quote a stone with worship? It is still a choice. Oh, so you are saying to me you have a choice to worship a stone, but it's not a must. <laughs> You're a genius. Okay, I want any one of you to tell me how touching a stone will erase your sin if you are not a pagan. If you are not a pagan, explain to me how touching stones in the Kaaba, and specifically not all the stones, the black stone and the Yemeni corner which we showed you in the pictures. How that will erase your sin? Who will explain to us? Anyone? Pagans. You Muslims are pagans. And the Sheikh, which we played his video, is saying the same. Is saying we Muslims and the pagan, we believe in the same thing. We are exactly the same copy paste. Actually, Islam is a copy of the previous pagan cult. Islam is not something new. The pagan, they worship Allah. The pagan, they believe in Allah. The pagan, they fear Allah. They pray to Allah and they go around the Kaaba and they kiss the black stone. And Muhammad, he did exactly follow the same steps of the pagans. This is why this guy is saying to you, we Muslims and the pagan, we are exactly the same. The majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth, would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Do you hear it? Same. Are you serious? Yes, sir. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Hmm. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, that Allah is the giver of life and death, that Allah is the creator, that hmm. Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. Did you see? It's exactly the Quran. It's all over the Quran. It's exactly the same religion. Paganism and Islam is exactly the same. They share the same God, the same worship, the same act, the same rituals. So what is different? Listen to what he was saying. What is different? If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so-and-so different with scholars so-and-so. Go to the sources. The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. This is their belief, but associated others with him. See? Through invoking them. See? And nowhere in the Quran, if you read it from cover to cover, that you will find a distinction or segregation between when you make dua to someone who's dead, thinking that he's capable or not capable of your intention. Dua is dua. Allah says in many places that they invoke others than Allah. He did not call them gods in these ayahs. Allah says clearly that they invoke other than Allah and they don't have any benefit for them or can protect them from any evil. Okay, here you see actually, there's a, there's a caliphate. He is a friend of Muhammad. He's a perverted man. His name is Umar al-Khattab. 
he exposed Muhammad and he said I know that you are used this stone <laughs> just because the Prophet kissed you I'm kissing you you're useless who was telling the truth Omar or Muhammad because Muhammad he says no the black stone is the right hand of Allah the black stone will come in the judgment day have tongue have eyes have uh, uh, and is going to witness intercede for you whoever touch it Muhammad he says the one who touch it it erase your sin Omar he said I know that you are harmless and useless do you see it Omar he got Muhammad busted copy paste just because the prophet did it I'm doing it okay hold on so if it is useless and harmless why the prophet did it do you see how stupid this religion is if it is useless and harmless why you kiss it now here we need to ask ourselves a question how we can match those here it says it is useless Muhammad he says it is useful to erase your sin do you see how silly stupid this cult is Ali he said it removes sin because the black stone is from Allah. Guys, look at this. Okay, hold on. Shaitan is from Allah according to Islam. What does that mean? Why wine is from Allah. Adam, Eve, you and me supposedly according to your religion, which I believe not true, from Allah. So stone is a stone. And if this is true, why Umar accusing Muhammad to be a fraud, to be a liar? Because Umar, he said with clear words, you are useless. Secondly, as long the stone is coming from Allah and it erases your sin, who need Muhammad? And who need Allah? And who need Islam? All what we need to do is just to touch the black stone and that's it it erase our sin my friend who need the Quran who need the Hadith who need the Sheikh who need the Jibreel we don't need all what we need is the black stone it erase your sin no no brain brainless that's it go and touch the black stone if we ask Ali, as long as Ali is the genius who is volunteered to answer us, or Mara Bara, why the black stone is made in the shape of a vagina? What is the secret about the look? Any Muslim can answer? Is that like a coincidence? It is like because you like it this way? Is it more attractive? What is behind? The black stone is in the shape of a vagina. Is that because this is the stone of fertility? And this is why the women, they used to go and touch it when they have their period? Let us go and see the history of the Arab. The Arab worship stones. And this is in the time of Muhammad and nothing changed. If the Arab could not find the stone, is unique stone, let us say, they make a stone. Look at this. Sahih al-Bukhari. This is authentic. We used to worship stones. What, what? 
We used to worship stones. This is a person who lived in the time of Muhammad. This is not a century before, a century after. And when we found a better stone, then, then the first one, we would throw the first one and take the, the later one. Do you see it? Upgrade. He got a new TV. Do you see it? This is where the black stone is coming from. So they found the stone. It looked different from the rest. And look here it says, and if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, i.e. soil, and then bring a sheep, sheep milk and milk, and that the sheep over it, and <clears throat> put the milk sheep over it. And perform what? Guys, be careful with me. And perform what? Tawaf around it. Do you see it? This is the Muslim Tawaf. Muslim, do you see it? This is the Muslim Tawaf. You are worshipping Allah, but you are saying the black stone erase your sin. Well, the pagan before Muhammad, they do the same. They worship Allah. We just played the video for you. Yeah, you are just a pagan following the Arab pagan. You are you are you are a victim of the paganism of the Arab. Poor you. So after we even make a stone, if we could not find a good stone to worship, we bring sheep milk and we mix it with it. And then we go and do tawaf around it. Do you see it? That is what the Arab practice. And not only that, not enough to forget to mention that the practice around the Kaaba was the most awkward, crazy ritual. They used to go around the Kaaba naked. Totally naked. And by the way, until now, the Muslims are naked around the Kaaba, in case you do not know. They just put a sheet. No underwear, no panties, nothing. It's just a sheet. So they try to change a little bit. And why they change Muhammad like a woman? She was going around the Kaaba naked. And he felt jealous because he want to have her as a wife. And you can find that in my book, Six in Allah. She was singing, making a point, going around the Kaaba, totally naked. And Muhammad, he saw her. He saw the nipples and the pebbles and the nipples and all the worst things. And then Muhammad, he told them, nobody go around the Kaaba naked after now. All those years, Muhammad was watching naked people go around the Kaaba, never open his mouth against it. Never. Do you remember the story of Jesus when he went inside the temple? Actually, it's not even the temple. It is in the yard of the temple. Not even the, 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 the deep yard, the outside yard. He flipped the tables on them. He said to them, you made the house of my father a bazaar. Muhammad watching people going naked, doing ritual nakedness in around the Kaaba, the house of his God. And he do nothing about it. He's watching. Totally naked. The question is, what was the religion, the practice, need or required women and men to be naked? You ask yourself. What is this religion? <clears throat> so, you throw at us paganism, and as you see, paganism came back at you harsh. And you throw at us and you say that we Christians, we drink and we get a drunk. Yeah, there's people that do that. 
but it's not encouraging the Bible. The Bible says the opposite. And your God, he copy Paul. But Paul was more clear about it. Your God, he just said, this is uh, from Shaitan. And here you see the funny Muslims religion is. They claim that Islam is good religion. And they attack Paul nonstop. When we find that Allah, he still with Paul, he said, and he put it in chapter 5, verse number 90. Almost word by word. If you drink wine and you get drunk, do you go to heaven? According to Islam, yes. You do. Allah, he says, Allah, he forgive all sin, which is you do, except shirk. What does that mean? Worshipping someone beside him. Anything else is okay. Illa lemon. And then when this man, he was speaking in the video, that if you drink beer and the beer have low alcohol, have what? Low alcohol is okay. Well, we can do, use that method for everything. I have low pork in the food. I have low uh, drugs in the food. Low cocaine, cocaine. Low, low, low. And actually he gave us an example showing the stupidity where he says, if you drink six packs of this, you don't get drunk. And if you drink six champagne, champagne you get drunk. So how come the first one is halal, the second one is not? Because obviously, what is forbidden should be is making you drunk or getting drunk, not a drinking. That's what you said. And here you see the hypocrisy of this cult. They legalize anything they want. They approve anything they want, when they want. And they have beer that is halal. <clears throat> How do we judge? We do that through the end result. If we have a beer that is called non-alcoholic and it has 0.3 or 0.5% alcohol in it, doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. But isn't it Jesus said, little of it bless your heart? Guys, is it true that Jesus says little of it to bless your heart? Do you see this hypocrite cult? So now he's saying the drink, as long as it have little of it, it's a bless your heart. So you don't forbid alcohol totally in Islam. It's a lie. And Muhammad used to teach Muslims how to make, you know, to make to make alcohol. And the Quran praise alcohol. And what make it more funny that Allah claimed that alcohol is a miracle from Allah. Muhammad trying to explain to the Arab, the Arab they love to, love to drink. Do you see a drink and you get drunk? Do you understand how this is happening? It's a miracle from Allah. The verse in front of you. <clears throat> Do not assure Islam is based in scholars. What does that mean? Can you write the word correctly so we can read your words, Aisha? Why you are cutting the letters like this? Are you doing coding like we are the Morse coding if you're prophet? If I try to use read your word, it's like Muhammad receiving Quran. How Muhammad received Quran, you remember? Muhammad, he said, he received Quran Sometime in the sound, the sound of a bell.
Look at this mad person. <coughs> How Allah he sent him Quran. This is an illness. You can go and check any doctor. Those people who have epilepsy, some kind of uh, uh, mental issues. I'm not, well, not making fun of them, by the way. I mean, if you are sick with something, that will not make you a bad person. I mean, this is you are just unlucky. Uh, this is what Muhammad he hear when Jibreel he give him Quran. A sound of a bell. Okay, this is verse number one. All right. Now I will give you verse number two. Yeah, this one is longer. I will give you verse number three. Sorry, this is a Christian verse, it's, it's by mistake. What the heck? The Prophet was receiving Quran as a sound of a bell, so it was not in Arabic? Okay, so Muhammad he received a bell. How in the world he became Arabic? Okay, sir, okay. We are going to attack immediately. I mean, look at the... Isn't it obvious this guy is mentally ill? Even he says, فَيَفْ عَنِّي He is not aware. He is like he, he, he faint. He go crazy. He is not aware of the world around him. And as long as you Muslims, <coughs> you claim that the Quran is preserved. That means the original Quran was a sound of a bell. Where we can find it? Who want to recite to me the Quran bell? Don't you say that the Quran is preserved? Will Muhammad receive a sound of a bell? And what make it more stupid, Muhammad, he said that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. Like, what the heck? The Prophet of Allah said, B, P, B, U, H. This is like a kind of a chemical thing, you know. Muhammad is a very high concentrated, stupid chemical. The bell is one of the musical instrument of shaitan. Okay, that's wonderful. So Muhammad received what? The instrument of shaitan. I mean, it's super clear. Muhammad saying that, not me. What Muhammad received? How he received the Quran? He received a sound of a bell. Hmm? He received what? A sound of a bell. Ringing bell. But what is the sound of the bell? It is the instrument of shaitan. Look at this genius. So in one hand he says, shaitan instrument is bell. In the other hand he said, Allah give me Quran by the sound of the bell. And not only that, 
Muhammad he said that angels will not accompany anyone who have a bill. Can you believe it? So how the angel came to Muhammad and he gave him a sound of a bell? I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, the angels do not enter a house which there is a small bell. Look at the phobia. He's a breed come in my house. The breed is big, so big he can cover the horizon according to Muslims. He has 600 wings. He saw little bell in my house. He cannot get in, sorry. Hey, Jibreel, come on. Look, look at this guy. There's a difference between ringing bell and the, the instrument of bell. Like, what the heck? My friend, somebody told you that shaitan, he is playing bell music. This is the bell. Muhammad, read, read the height in front of you. It says, angels will not enter even a house of a bell. What do you mean there's a difference? Guys, there's a difference between the bell, the sound, the instrument of the bell and the bell sound. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Do you see how the try explain to us? And how did they try to defend? A big failure. They don't know what to do. In the same time, as long as Muslims agree that Muhammad received Quran as a sound of a bell, what happened after? Did he deliver to you a bell or he delivered to you Arabic? How he can Muhammad transform the sound of a bell into Arabic? Who wanna help us? Anyone? And the funny, they say we are pagans. Hmm. Look who is talking. Look who is talking. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? But just be careful. Anything is going to be used against you when you talk to me. I'm not like a rest, you know. That's why Muslims, they advise each other not to call me and uh, if they call me like uh, the guy with his name the dead boy he said to the muslims do you like me to debate christian prince he said, sure like brother no as he said what do you who, who you like me to debate like suppose he is a hero he said like, brother a christian prince he's making other people leave islam I said, oh, okay okay and now suppose he will step a debate all right away he played for me like this is how much they are intimidated cowards potatoes the tit boy who is a muslim who is a sheikh not a tit boy he dared to debate me the golden shower boy they accuse you of what they say if we call their prophet they say you are a sexual predator they say it it's okay have you ever even heard of a prophet he ordered women to give their tits to adult mature men? I mean, what? This is obviously proof that Muhammad is mentally ill. I mean, what kind of advice? What? Can you tell me why Jewish they kiss? You go and ask them, this is not my religion. Same time, if they do that, they have to do it based on the Bible. If it's not there, that's mean they are just following tradition. I'm being stupid. Very simple. You can go and do it. You see, when we judge, we judge the founder of the cult. So when we say Muhammad, he kissed the black stone, you cannot say, oh, Muslims, we have nothing to do with this. This is a tradition of somebody. It's your prophet who kiss it. It's your prophet who claim it erased their sin. So if a Jewish guy, he do something, this is business. This is between him and God. But did his God say that to him? The God in the Old Testament said it clearly, make no images of what up in heaven or down on earth. Simple and clear. And one more time you call us pagan, I will send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. 
black stone kisser you want to insult try me I'm a Middle Eastern so if you like to insult feel free I will return it in the top of the head of your prophet with no mercy so watch your tongue and behave black stone kisser So they drink wine and they get drunk. And even the Quran says that the Muslims they used to drink and get a drunk and go to the mosque to pray. Can you believe it? And then when the Arab they start making fun of Muhammad and says, what kind of companion you have? They are a bunch of a drunken. What Muhammad he said, he did not say it's forbidden for you. He said, don't go to the prayer when you are drunk, okay? No, read it, it's in front of you. Do you see it? And here you can tell that Muhammad was a very lousy person. He's a hippie. He had double standard. And if a Muslim, he will say to you, oh, Islam came in stages because he cannot forbid them right away from drinking. Why they cannot? Are you trapping them? Either you accept my belief or you don't. Are you trapping the person? Yes, Islam will trap you. Islam is a trap. Get in, you cannot get out. Do you remember the Sheikh in the video? He says, don't be like those who these days they compromise in order to gain numbers. You remember the video? They compromise to gain what? To gain numbers. Talking about Muslims. Well, Muhammad was doing that. Actually, everything this guy he said about the pagan is exactly about Muhammad himself. Muhammad, he did the same. People as mushrik, because there's so many of them. Well, Allah Azza wa labeled them in the Quran. When he said, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مشركون. The vast majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth, would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Mm. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe used to believe that Allah is the provider, that Allah is the giver of life and death, that Allah is the creator, that Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. It's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so-and-so different with scholars so-and-so. Go to the sources. The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. This is their belief, <coughs> but associated others with him through invoking them and nowhere in the Quran if you read it from cover to cover that you will find a distinction or segregation between when you make dua to someone who's dead thinking that he's capable or not capable of your intention dua is dua hmm. Allah says in isn't it the Quran says Allah and Allah and the angels praying on the Prophet And here you find another stupid thing in this book. You see, Muhammad is a very sick person. He wanted to have all the attention. To the point, even Muhammad, he claimed that the whole world is created for the sake of him. Can you believe it? The trees, everything grass, fruits, sky, sun. Everything created for the sake of Muhammad.
And let me show you what I'm talking about. To prove to you that this person is mentally ill. With no question. Okay. Look at this. I don't know if the text is clear for you because it's not too much dark. If not you, Muhammad, Allah said, if you, if, uh, if not for you, O Muhammad, I would have, not, would not have created the creation. Who's talking supposed to Allah? Do you see how sick pagan this person? This is a pagan teaching that everything, because you see, Muhammad here is copying what the Bible says about Jesus. And what make it pagan, because Muhammad is a man, not God. I mean, the Muslim, do you Muslim believe he's God? You say no. But it says here, everything created for him. The Bible says about Jesus, everything created for him and by him. For him, by him. Here it says, if not for you, O Muhammad, I would not have created the creation as if it's saying that Muhammad is Jesus. Do you see it? Answer Aisha, I don't know what she is saying. Anyone can understand what she is saying? Christian Prince is a coward. He know what it's, I said is real. This is why he's hiding from you. Well, Aisha, do you like to call me? Hiding it from you, potato? What hiding from what from me? Do you like to call me? And don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to practice breastfeeding as the prophet said. And use normal letters so we can read your words. Stop being an idiot. And then he continued. This is the Muslim answers now. The answer, the question asking, is this, is this hadith is accurate? Is it good? The answer is, indeed, the Prophet of Allah is the reason for the creation of Adam. Peace on him and the universe, brother. The Prophet, if the Prophet of Allah was not in existence, then the arsh, the throne of Allah, the kursi, the chair of Allah, the tablet of Allah, the pen of Allah, the sky, the earth, the heaven, the hell would not be exist. Do you see it? Pagans. I'm not even in pal talk. Yeah, why I want to go in pal talk? Why somebody want to debate me? If there's somebody want to debate me, you are not even in pal talk. Here we go. I will look in Pal Talk. Who, wanna, who is a Muslim want to call me? Hmm. They complain about I am not in Pal Talk. The second I go to Pal Talk, nobody will, nobody will do anything. Eh, just be my witness. Let's see. Look how many is asking if I am in Pal Talk. Hmm? Look how many. Now we go in Pal Talk. Eh. One, two, three. Bingo. We are in Pal Talk. Who is a Muslim wanna talk to me? <clears throat> Any Muslim? What? Hello? Potatoes. They talk about come to Pal Talk. You are not even in Pal Talk. How we can call you in Pal Talk? And then we go to Pal Talk and nobody call us. You are not even potato. You are a mashed potato. All of you are heroes. Especially after I log off. 
or you see a Muslim, he saw, he say, he go online, he says, brother, I tell him Christian friends, tell him to come here. <laughs> I tell him. him. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know if he is. Uh... There's a Muslim, he texted me from before. I don't know if he is watching us now. Do we have any Muslim explain to us how Allah, he created the whole universe for Muhammad? Everything created for Muhammad. The Prophet of Allah said, Allah said, when Adam made a mistake, which means he commits sin, he asked, oh Allah, I asked you for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me. Guys, look at this story. Look how hilarious. Allah said, Oh Adam, how do you recognize Muhammad when I have not created him yet? Adam said, Allah, when you created me and blow into my me the spirit, I lifted my head and saw written on the arsh and the, the which means your throne that the shahada there's no God but Allah and the moon God and Muhammad is his messenger. Hey, Adam he saw it there. So I got to know that you would only join your name with the one, the most beloved one to you. Allah said to Adam, O oh Adam, you have spoken the truth. Indeed. Muhammad is the more beloved to me than anything. Do you see Muslims? Who is a Muslim agree with this story? Who is a Muslim he agree with this story? Look at them. They don't know, they go between the bushes now. Pagans. Pagans. Religion of the pagans. Allah Himself is exists for one reason to make Muhammad happy. Allah, He joined His name with Muhammad. Did you see it? It's written in front of you. What paganism is? What the Sheikh he said about paganism to join the name of Allah? With the name of an idol or a man, that is Islam. Shahada is a paganism. It's in the front of your eyes. They joined the name of Muhammad with the name of their God. They made a Shahada, which is the way to get into Islam is to join Muhammad name and the name of Allah. And she can text me Aisha and Balto. I, as long as she is not six years old as the wife of the Prophet. If she are adult and you are over 20 something, you are welcome to call me. If you are six years old, or under the age, don't call me. I will hang up on you. Do we have any Muslim want to explain to us why the pagan Muslim? So I know, I mean, anyway, the video is going like all over the place here. But as you see, we are just refuting the Muslims who speak about us. But everything they claim about us, we don't have it. It is them who have it. Prostitution is the religion of Allah. Even the Quran said it clearly. Force not your girls, who are they? The slaves, to do prostitution. And if you forgive them, if you force them, Allah is all merciful. There's no punishment. The Arab women, they start complaining that their husband, they, are, they turn into pimps. Pimps, literally pimps. They capture girls and they force them into prostitution. And then Muhammad, when I make himself look better in front of the Christians and the Jews and everybody, they are, right, they are disgusted by this religion. So what he said, 
Force not your girls into prostitution if they choose a chastity. What if, so if they agree, if they agree, we it's okay. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Force not your maids to prostitution when they desire chastity. In order you may gain and gain again good or money. But if any one of you force them, Allah is all merciful. Do you see it? This is a license for prostitution, especially if the girl agree. Do you see it? There's no verse in the whole Quran says don't do prostitution. The verse saying the opposite. Don't force them to do it. If they agree, you are good to go. And if you force them, there's no punishment. There's no, Allah is more merciful. My friend, you do not need a phone. You just download Pal Talk. It's for free. There's no need for phone. I don't use phone. All right. Why do you want to use phone? Pal Talk. It's a free program. All what take you is just sign in. Take you two seconds. Download the app and contact me. Any Muslim? And look now how long I am in Pal Talk. For how long I am in Pal Talk. Nobody is texting me. It will go on live. Do you see me? Online. Where is the Muslims? Hmm? Where is the one who was crying? You are not even in Pal Talk. That's what they do. And now after I log off, a guy will go and make a video says Christian Prince I challenge you Christian Prince okay here we go go live no problem give me your pal talk I will call you you can be live in your channel no problem <laughs> doesn't matter I will call you even if you are too little for me no problem and if you claim to be big so big I would love it so people will have fun who as a Muslim is going to call his sheikh so he can call me and show us the truth. Hmm? So if you drink six packs of halal beer, it's okay. If you drink six of champagne, it's not or 0.5% alcohol in it. Doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. Hence, it is halal. See, the stupidity. Well, who said if you drink a little bit of wine, that will make you drunk? I remember I used to have a Muslim friend, he's a Muslim. Actually, he's a Shia. You know, I consider him as a friend because he don't really follow Islam at all, you know. But this guy, he drink, he love vodka. You know vodka? Very strong. He drink the whole vodka as if he's drinking water and he don't get drunk. Based on what he just said, if you drink a bottle of vodka and you don't get drunk, it's halal. He just, we just heard him saying that. So what's the point of this forbidden drinking? Just say forbid to be drunk. And that's it. And what make it more ugly, he said that doctors advise to drink it as a, it can be a medicine. So alcohol is not bad. As anything else, if you use too much of it, it can kill you, it can harm you. Too much fat will harm you. Too much meat will harm you. Too much sugar will harm you. Too much salt will harm you. Like any food. But because Islam is an empty cult, it's empty. And Muhammad was desperate trying to build a religion or something looked like a religion. The Jews have rules. So Muhammad, he start making rules. And 
the rules get more complicated with his superstition like you know the black dog is the devil if you go and have intercourse with your wife shaitan will wrap himself around your penis Muslim is a person who live under conspiracy situation maybe the admin can post the link for you about this penis thing so if a Muslim he want to go to have sex with his wife now he's worried because shaitan will round himself around the penis like what so now your wife she is like excited waiting for her husband she put makeup she put perfume and now the abdul is coming and now the abdul stand in front of her suddenly he cannot get it close yet because he have to recite certain prayer otherwise shaitan will round himself around the penis of this abdul and then the shaitan will do boom boom to your wife what is my thought about mufti abu Laith? even this guy need my thought ah, they are comedian and they are they laugh at their religion what do you want more this guy we should pay him what is my thought <clears throat> even this guy need my thought And you will find in the internet tons of stories about Muslim men, their wives is having an affair with the genie. And those are truly story, by the way. And they happened. There is witnesses. If you read my book, Sex and Allah, and you will see what I'm talking about. Question, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm married for 24 years. My marriage has not been one that I can be happy about. 24 years, not good. Okay. My argument have uh, filed my marriage. <clears throat> about four years ago, my wife starting changing. I have noticed that she would be sexually aroused, which I have not seen before in her sleep. And when I wake her, she get she be angry with me. I need your help. Like Abdul, you idiot. Obviously, your wife, she is horny. You are not doing your job. You wake her up to tell her what? You are horny? Do something. Hey, honey, wake up, wake up. So the woman, she is like in the limbo. And the Abdul in the bimbo. So he wake her up to tell her, wake up. Well, why you are waking up? Either you wake her up to do what you need to do, or don't wake her up so she gets angry. And now I need your help since my marriage is heading to divorce. <laughs> now the sheikh will answer. Look at this. Look, look at the, the look at this knowledge, brother. She's right. In the sense of sex of a dream, like nightmare, a dream, illusion, holm, from shaitan only in the sense of inspiration, not in the sense of shaitan, affects something in the person. Kadi Ayed, this is supposed to be a big judge, Muslim, he said. Anyway, let's see. Now the guy, he's is giving him recipe to stop his wife from being so horny at night. You need to recite Ya Wadud 100 times. <laughs> hey, married guys. If your wife is so horny and you do not know what to do with her, brother, say Ya Wadud 100 times a day. Okay? And your wife, she will not be horny at all. Let us start me and you right now. Ya Wadud, 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 Ya Wadud. Look, the woman, she's she's coming down now. Look, 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 she is not. She's not uh, doing that. Like, she's doing a little bit. Uh, the more I say it, yeah, we do it. Yeah, we do. I mean, look at this genius. This is Islam, super superstition story, stupidity. So if you say 100 times a day, brother, it doesn't happen to you. 
That's deep. And crazy stuff. The truth is, it is possible for a human and a human being and jinn to have intercourse. A Thalavi mentioned in the tafsir that in, in this meaning, and this is why here the prophet he says, if a man he have to pray, he have to recite a prayer. Yeah. So shaitan he round himself around your penis if you don't say the prayer. So Muhammad he was trying to create as much as fictions in order to control your brain, your thinking. Uh, do you remember me? You made me a moderator when I was a Muslim. I don't remember you, Yasmin. I don't know. So what happened, Yasmin? Are you okay now? Are you okay, my friend? So you are the Muslim now? Oh, Yasmin, come on. You don't wanna. You don't want to get to heaven, and you will be jailed in a big tent. Come on. How in the world somebody he lose such an opportunity, brothers and sisters? If you are a Muslim woman. In heaven, you will be in jail. So beautiful. Only your husband can see you. No shopping. No moon. For eternity. You are going to be jailed, brother. In a tent. Brother. How beautiful. I know all women like to be jailed, you know? I mean, they love it. Just put them in jail. They go crazy, women. You know, they love it. They love it. It's one of their hobbies. Oh, you are Christian now? Well, good for you, Jas uh, uh, Jasmine. Yasmin. Okay, Yasmin, you know what? I'm going to make you an admin, my sister. I don't know you, but I trust my instinct. Here we go. You can add me now. But don't bounce me out of the chat. Like, come on. Don't abuse your power. So, wherein both will be those medians restraining their in their gallants upon their husbands. And no genie opened the sexual skin for them yet, brother. I mean, this is the God, and this is the only God who describe for you what is inside the vagina. Can you believe it? Do you see it? Look, Yasmin Koroshi, now she became a blue. Alhamdulillah. Allah made you blue. Oh, Lalu. Um... Uh, my friend, don't make an account to, the, to, to contact me in Pal Talk. I don't contact people there. I just use Pal Talk to debate. <coughs> okay, let's call this Muslim. Hello? Hello? Do you hear me, my friend? Hello? Hello? Yes, do you hear me, my friend? Yes, yes, I can hear if, if you can speak louder, that will be better. So, so you are a Muslim, right? Yes. All right. So what do you like to say to me? Go ahead. Well, I've been listening to your videos for a while, and... Uh, the main argument for this right now is I want to know more about Christianity, but because from your side it's mostly against Islam, so I want to know actually more, like it doesn't act prove its Christianity is correct. So that's why I want maybe more news from your side. Yeah, you know, my friend, when I prove Islam to be wrong, you are right, it doesn't prove Christianity to be right, 
But uh, because you are a Muslim, it's very important for me first to get rid of, let us say, for me, I believe like Islam is like a virus infection. So in order to help you to become a Christian, first I have to cleanse you and clear you from the idea of Islam. So if we reach that point, I will be more than happy to answer any of your question about Christianity. So we can we go there first into Islam and see what keeping you as a Muslim, why you are still a Muslim? <clears throat> well, I don't know, like, uh, so far, like, because you are raised for it for over 30 years, so it's impossible to think otherwise. Same question you asked the Christian, why are you Christian? 99% they will ask because you are born this way. Well, you know, but this is not an answer, really. I mean, in Christianity, the Bible says, no, you are not a Christian unless you are born again. Unless you are born again. What does that mean? Let me, let me answer, my friend. In Christianity, a Christian is not somebody is born of a Christian family. In Christianity, is someone is born again with a Christ, which means he accepted Christ as Savior. He understands what Christ he did to him. He understands who is a Christ to him. And he decides to follow Christ. That will make you born again. Otherwise, born of a Christian family does not make you Christian. In Islam, yes. So now, you said you are a Muslim for 30 years. Still, what is holding you to be a Muslim? Because still, I mean, you can change. I mean, what, uh, it's, not, you know, it's a belief. It's a belief inside you. Either you believe it or you don't believe it. So do you believe in Islam really? Or you are just a Muslim by name? Well, now that I'm watching more of the videos, now it's, like uh, changing my thought process that's why that's why but at the same time it's like uh, what you're advocating christianity it's like jumping from one religion to another so that's why it's, it's also confusing no i don't but, want... uh, because you're offering the alternative yeah I'm, I'm not i don't want you to jump because you can still leave islam and don't accept christianity and we are not like uh, you know like buy one get one free no <laughs> this is not the deal the deal is it's a choice you make at the end of the day you accept, you don't accept, this your business. For me, I help you. I help you in both. I help you to leave Islam. I help you to understand Christianity. At the end of the day, it is you who believe or not. It's not me. It's not about uh, alternative. And you know, this is not, can we stay atheist? It's up to you. I mean, this is, this is a choice you make, my friend. So you as a Muslim, if somebody now say to you, you are a Muslim and say to you, okay, what make you still believe in Islam? If there's anything, you said you are watching my videos and that making you change in your thoughts. I like that. But is it if there is anything you think it's good in this religion or make you think for a second or for a moment that Islam not totally a lie? Like you are not sure? So maybe I can help you in that part? If anything, like you're exposing a few parts that are, uh, let's say, the uh, the... The, uh, I mean, the uh, child marriage and all of these things, and the, uh, his uh, son-in-law, uh, uh, like uh, marrying Zaina. I don't remember the names. I'm a bit confused. Yes, yeah, Zaina. But, uh, <coughs> uh, but there are still good parts of it, and this is the only part that's giving me. Like what? Give me, the, like, give me uh, the good part. Like uh, giving charity, for example. Okay, like but to people, uh, okay, hold on. Yeah, okay, I will go with you, guys. Giving charity, but don't you know that this charity is a theft? So you attack the Christians, and you take your money, or the Jews, or the Hindus, and then you claim that you are giving charity from a money you did not earn. Is that fair? Yeah. So sorry, could you repeat that? So the charity you are giving, Muslims, Muhammad who was talking about giving charity was talking to who? to people who they are around him, right? Okay, the charity is, was the booty, from the booty, from the money you stole from the Christians and the Jews and the, and the Arab. So you attack us and then suddenly you became a good guy by giving charity. So I go to your house, I steal $10,000 and then I give donation $20 for the poor, a poor Muslim. And that make me following a good religion? How that can be? Uh, this, of course, is, uh, yeah, if, if, it, if it's by force, if it's uh, attacking uh, like innocent people, yes, then, then, then 
Let me show you from the Quran the proof of what I say. I don't like to say things without, you know, the proof. And know that whatever of war booty that you may gain, verily one fifth is to Muhammad. <laughs> and then uh, to, to the charity or those who they are close to the Prophet, the, the, the relative of the Prophet, and then to the orphans. But this is all from a theft. All this money, Muhammad did not pay a penny from his pocket yet. This is coming only from the booty. Even the Quran called it booty. So where is the where is the charity? I'm going to go to the highway and I'm going to stop people with cars and steal their money. You know, I have weapon. And then after I finish robbing like 50 people, then I go to a church and I give them, you know, a hundred dollar. This is the charity. Mm -hmm. This is not a charity, this is a theft. So, But, uh, okay, but, uh, but like uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm convinced with many points. Said the, I'm just holding basically because it's been a long time and uh, and it feels strange to to suddenly change. It's 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 uh, still scary. But uh, that's why I want to ask you more about the if because if I know more about the Christianity part, maybe it it is it will be the final push for me. So so uh, I don't know if it's okay if I can ask uh, or specifically on Christianity or not. All right, but can you, can you speak louder? So but uh, so uh, if we speak about Christianity, is that what going to make you leave Islam, my friend? All right. So, what is the question about Christianity? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. For the, like it's it's basic questions, but uh, <coughs> why did Jesus, for example, why did he have to die for the sins? Why he he because if he, if he's God, he can he can decide this for us. He can he can try to forgive us without the need of him to die. So, why did he need to die? Well, first of all, he did not need to die. You see, this is there's nowhere in Christianity it says he need to die. You know, this is a very wrong word to use. The Bible says, for God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. So he loved you and me and all people, including Muslims, Hindus, Buddhas. And this is what in the, in the book of John, chapter 3, it says. So for God so loved the world, so he sent his only begotten son. So he did not send him, and the purpose is not the death of Jesus, the purpose is to save you. And the Bible says, in, in, the, Bible, in, in, the, in the verse, as an example, and let me open it so I can read uh, uh, without, because in English, sometime I might miss a word. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, and that what who, who's ever believed in him, should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. So Jesus did not come and, okay, I'm going to die, and then they will be saved. This is not what Christianity teach. Jesus come to save us, and then if you believe in Jesus, whatever Jesus did, including the cross, you are saved. Are you getting my point? Hello? Ouch. Something wrong with this connection. Hello? Hello? Yeah, something wrong with the connection. Did, did, did you hear my question? Did you hear my answer? Did, did you hear my answer? Yeah, here we go. All right. So Mr. Cobra, he's a Muslim. You know, and this is how what he said to me today. All right, and we will call him back. Hello. Yes, my friend, we are with you. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So the, I changed the microphone. Is it better now? Oh, it's way better. Actually, very good. 
Yeah. So, okay. so did, did, you okay. my, did, you, did you hear my answer? What I said to you? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the 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 purpose is at least the, the purpose. You know, it's not Jesus. Okay, Jesus. He have, he have to die, and then you you have to live. No. Part, huh? You know, this is what Jesus did, and this is what they did to him. You know, if Jesus he knew the future, he knew what they would do to him, and this is what we did to him as a human to him. But still, he loved us. Still, he coming to save us. This is telling us how much love he have for us. Imagine somebody coming to save you, and he knew. You will call him names, you will make fun of him, you will reject him, and even you are going to kill him. Still, he do it. So this is what Christianity is based on, love. The Bible says God is love. So for God, he loves you. He sent you the Messiah. And then whoever believe in the Messiah and whatever the Messiah did or stand for, this person will not perish and he will live forever. All right, and so so basically, if, if you accept him, if you accept uh, if, him, if you accept him, basically, and uh, okay, well, how, and how do you do this? Uh, how does it work? Like, uh, for example, in, in Islam, you have to say specific words in no, in, no. In, in in Arabic. No, how does no. this work? In, this is in this, this is a this is a pagan practice. You have to say certain things. For in Christianity, believing in Jesus is a personal relationship with God so you say to him whatever you want you say the Lord I believe in you the Messiah I believe that you came in this earth I became in the I, I believe in the Father the Son the Holy Spirit I believe I believe that you you've been crucified to save me I believe that you came to save me and I believe that everything you did according to the Bible is true and I want to follow you you say whatever you want I'm just saying an idea we don't we don't believe in some repeated shahada this is copy paste mm -hmm. and it's not personal you have to say personal words to the lord from your heart not just uh, hypocrite words you know like somebody said something we copy and we say we repeat there's not no such a thing like this in christianity you don't have even to pray in a certain time you pray anytime you want pray non stop if you want so in christianity you have relationship with your lord and your Lord, he said, knock at my door, I will open for you. Which means anytime you feel you want to talk to him, talk to him. And the Messiah, he forbid us not to be the same as the hypocrite. And as if he is talking about Islam. So he said to us, don't pray in the corners. Like the hypocrites. Why they pray in the corners? Because they like to show everybody that they are praying. They like to uh, glorify it, that they are good, they are nice people, you know. So we pray in public in order to get the attention. Jesus, he forbid us from that. So if you become a Christian, you have to forget about everything in Islam. Your prayer is personal. Your worship is personal. Your uh, fellowship with God is personal between you and God. Anyone else, you have no business. If we go right now to Matthew, chapter 6, it says, And when you pray, you shall not be the same as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, which means their hypocrisy. They want it to be seen. And then he said, and you, if you want to pray, you go to your closet. The closet is like a small room, which is it's locked. You know, this is the closet. And then you pray, you close your door, and then you pray to the Father, which is in secret, and the Father which sees you in secret shall reward you openly do you see how Christianity work so Christianity is totally one million percent the mm -hmm. opposite from Islam and then he says and when you pray use not vain repetition don't repeat and say word blah 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 you know God is not a fool he understand what you want don't repeat like the Muslims keep repeating this prayer etc as 
you know, uh, uh, to make it simple, you know, uh, just don't repeat yourself. God is not deaf, <laughs> you know. You don't need to repeat the prayer for non-stop. Just say whatever you want. Do it in secretly. And this is why, like, you will not see a Christian saying, hey, guys, I have to go and pray. Most time they have to, oh, I'm fasting. Oh, time to pray. Oh, brother, we have to pray because it is a hypocrisy cult. And Jesus, when he did order us, his order still is a choice, which means you can be a hypocrite and you pray in public. And that now somebody might say, so if we go in the church, are we a hypocrite? No, church is a, is a group worship. It's made to be group worship. But when you want to have relationship with the Lord, you pray in your closet in secret. And that is the only prayer, which is, we can say, uh, uh, it, it is like uh, from truly from your heart. The church is a place where we learn, where we share, and we can pray to the Lord from our heart too. But the one which is in secret is the blessed one because nobody will see you. You are not getting reward from this. So if I if I bow down and say, Lord, forgive me, obviously I'm not seeking anyone to glorify me because nobody saw me. It's just in private. People maybe think I'm a bad person, but in my private life, I pray maybe. Maybe I don't. So Jesus, he forbid us from being hypocrite and he want us to be truthful not like Islam. So now if you want to accept the Messiah, you say to him whatever you want. Anything from your heart. You tell him, I'm, you know, I believe in you. I believe that you are my savior. I believe that you die on the cross to save me. I believe in everything you did. You say whatever you want. And I like you. You may, I want to uh, show a few points like that are similar. You you mentioned today the the black stone, for example, and how it erases. I, as I understand, also if you want to to uh, be Christian, you also need to be baptized, and you need to have water touch you. So so it is same thing. You you why would you need to kiss a stone? Why would you need to have water? to be with you it's the same concept like uh, that's why it's also confusing like uh, i'm just mentioning the similarities yeah for these points well, and well, I, th this is my point is it needed or not no you see the baptism we don't believe that this water will make you uh, go to heaven it's not the water simply when you do baptism it's a symbolic of you accepting a new life and you are washing yourself from the previous in the same time, you are ready to receive the blessing of God and the Holy Spirit within you. So the baptism itself by water is not the water for us is holy. The black stone for them is holy. You kiss the black stone, your sin is erased. You do baptism or not, your sin is there. You see, when we say that uh, uh, Jesus, he paid for our sin, doesn't mean that you have a license for sin. You paid for sin. You know, I mean, you, you actually... Uh, you 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 paid by sin by doing sin, which means you are guilty. That is your payment. The first payment you do is your guilt. So the baptism is not going to be like a holy magical water by touching it. You are a new person, etc. It is God, which is going to be through you by accepting Him, by welcoming Him to your life. That will be within you. So the symbolic of the baptism is me accepting a new life and I wash myself from all the previous sin and the previous life so it is not a pagan practice we don't believe that the water is magical it's not normal water it can be a river it can be even a, river, a water from the faucet it's a symbolic in the same time the Bible teach us that the baptism is so important because you announce yourself to be a new person with God and you are willing to receive the Holy Spirit which is the Spirit of God to be within you so have nothing to do with paganism have nothing to do with worshiping water have nothing to do with magical water it is a new era in your life it's like you are going in direction let us say you are going to the south and then suddenly you said the south is wrong direction I'm going to switch into the north but you cannot switch the north without changing direction, correct? You have to change direction. So is it changing direction is a pagan thing? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Because simply I'm following the right direction. So, you know, the, the, the baptism 
is you announcing yourself in front of the Lord that I am here to change the direction of my life, accepting you in my life, welcoming you in my life, and you ask the Lord to accept you too. So it's a change of direction, it's a change of belief, it's a change of a stand of life, of a vision, how you see life, how you see people around you, how you look at God. That is a new life with the baptism. But it's not the baptism who is like a magical thing. We don't believe in magical water. If you touch it, you became a different person. We believe that God changed people, yes. God changed the heart of people, yes. But before you, before God can change you, I don't want to use the word can, before God change you, you should ask God to change you. So baptism simply, you are giving yourself to the Lord, says, Lord, help me for the direction of a change. I'm here, guide me. Otherwise, it's not, it's not something I have to do with anything as you, as you imagine it is. Okay, and uh, I think uh, this is one one final question, but it, I think it will really help me a lot. Uh, is there any like uh, for for me like uh, the 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 concept of him ri rising from the, after three days after uh, after crucifixion and people saw it? This is an important historical event that happened. But is there any? proof any other sources that this happened other than the Bible like uh, because the Bible is reporting it is there any other source that other people that saw it uh, happening you so that it's a more evidence that uh, it's uh, more than one source well you know the Bible says that there's hundreds and, and, and of people they, they saw Jesus and even thousands so uh, to go back 2,000 years ago maybe you can ask me to to show you Jesus himself you know that is uh, this, that's something I cannot do. I cannot bring you people who uh, they were witnessing Jesus to mm -hmm. witness if they saw this or not. Uh, however, you know, uh, for me as a Christian, me myself, I wasn't in, next to the cross. I wasn't there when Jesus was out of the tomb, and I wasn't there when Jesus was talking. You know, but there is something very important. Uh, let us say, for the sake of argument. Jesus was not crucified. <clears throat> let us say he was not, you know. And let us say Jesus was, like some they want to say he's a prophet, like Islam says he's a prophet, right? And uh, uh, some say, some yes. say, some say, everybody can give you different opinion. Like there's people who they are Jehovah's Witnesses, they say that Jesus is an angel. If there's any proof of that? No. Muhammad is saying that Jesus was not crucified. And there's any proof of that? No. Muhammad wasn't there. Muhammad is a person who came 600 years after Jesus. So for me to come 2,000 years after Jesus and to tell you I was there and this is what happened, I will be fooling myself and fooling you. But why people who sacrifice their life? You see, the, the, the Christian uh, uh, the disciples of Christ, they were not mujahideen to go and kill and get women and booty. Those people were losing, which means they are losing their life, they are losing their money, they are humiliated, they've been imprisoned, they've been fed to the, to the animals. Still, they believe that Jesus was resurrected. You know what I mean? I mean, why somebody want to do that? I put you in the front of a lion mm -hmm. and I say, deny Jesus, I will let you go. You say, no, give me to the lion. So, if they are not witnesses and believers they will not do what they are doing you know what i mean how many christians today are willing to be fitted to the to the to the beast to the lions and still they will be christians even the quran speak about the people of the akhdud where supposedly a jewish king he put a fire he made like a big hole in the ground and he brought the Christians and he said to them, deny Jesus. Deny what? Deny Jesus. Deny your faith. The Christians, they decide to go for fire and not to deny Jesus. Why do they want to do that? 
and this is in chapter 85 and you can read from verse number 4 and 5 the Quran was copying a story and this is part of a true story about what happened to the Christian when discriminated by a Jewish king supposedly I wasn't there and this king he said bring all the Christians either they leave they believe or we bring them all and the Quran report the story that they were born burned and yet they did not deny their belief the question will be why anyone want to do that if especially when we speak about the disciples the disciples who were with Jesus why they want to say we saw Jesus and then they are willing to die for it not killing people not going to war which means they are getting, getting killed for no crime they did not fight anyone why do they want to do that do you have an explanation what do you think yeah uh like uh, there is no motive but, uh, there but uh, it makes sense i, I know but uh, mm -hmm. yeah right you know I, a, a, a person you see especially we are talking about people who were with, with jesus not somebody believe later you know what i mean like i am a person who believe in jesus later maybe i'm willing to die for yes, the sake because, of jesus mm -hmm. but those are people who were there so they knew what happened exactly correct so they saw if jesus did miracle or not they saw if Jesus walked in water or not. They saw if Jesus made the dead come to life. They saw if Jesus made the blind see or not. They saw that Jesus, he wasn't the cross or not. So, and then they saw that Jesus come from the tomb or not. So why they want to fight? They will not fight for their life and live, but they are as if they are asking you to kill them and not to leave. Believing in a lie. Let us say for the sake of argument, all what Jesus did was a lie. Why those people want to die for the sake of a lie? And they are smart people, like not, they are not like a bunch of crazy people. Why do they want to do that? Yeah, makes sense. And and if if. Uh... If, if I would like to start in reading, uh, let's say the Bible, w which one would I start? And this is another common uh, argument, like uh, they would say there is only one Quran and there is, uh, I don't know how many Bibles. And, and uh, so so that's why it's also confusing how many books am I reading to, to find the word of God. No, this is, and, not, uh, this so is I want this is, your opinion on this. Like, uh, Yeah, this is a false statement, Muhammad, and they come with. We have one Bible, we don't have many and we have different translation it is the muslim who don't have quran at all actually you don't have a quran which quran you are reading you said to me you have one quran which quran the quran of uh Hafs or warsh yeah you it's mostly Hafs. Yeah, yeah okay but you have many quran and at the same time you have uh, yeah, th thousands mm -hmm. of translation each one of them is different they change everything. So when the Muslim they say to you, okay, which version of the Bible is the King James? Well, this is not just a translation. This is the name of the translation. The king he ordered to translate. They call it King James translation. But it's not a new Bible. So they fabricate. So statement. it's like uh, Ali Yusuf or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, it's a translation because we are translating from the the where well, Jesus is, you know the Bible written in three languages, major three languages, Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek. So any any book after that. You know, and there's the Coptic language. This is from the oldest, you know, and there is uh, some manuscript like in Persian, some manuscript in the, uh, in the Indian language, like depending on how old the disciple, how long they went there and how much we have a manuscript. But the major manuscript we have is either Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek. So the rest is a translation. So when they say to you, which version of the Bible, this is not a new book, this translation. And if a translator was let us say, a good translator, then we accept him. The churches, they need to accept him. Not every translation is accepted. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a translation accepted, and there's translation. I, I can make a translation mm -hmm. right now. You can make a translation yourself. 
you know. A Muslim, he can make a translation of the Bible if he want. Who's going to stop him? And he can add things, he can take things, but this is in the translation. That is not the book. Right? So, if you want to read the Bible, choose anyone. We have the four guys. Oh, okay. Can I ask which, which? Yes, uh, this is my, my question. Like, uh, which matter. one would, would you it doesn't matter. Like, advise? I have zero knowledge on this. You see, all books are good for God is there, but not like the Quran. We don't believe in the Quran. What the Quran says, if Allah, uh, uh, Allah, he calls uh, uh, you to forget Quran so he can give you something better or similar. We don't believe in this, like chapter 2, verse 106. So when the Quran says, none of our revelation we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring better or similar. We don't have better book than other book. All the four Bibles is the book of God and they are, no one is better than the other one. However, each one of them, he give you mm -hmm. a new, you see, you heard of something called the three dimension, three dimension, right? Like there's a picture from the front, there's a picture from the right, there's a picture yeah, from the left. Okay. The Bible gives you four dimensions, which means full perfect dimension of the story. You have four reporters, and each one of them he is not copying the other one because if they are copying, there's no need for this the, the, this book. You know what I mean? If they are exactly word by word, then there is no need to write a new book. We'll just copy the first one. So it's a four dimension of Jesus story which is giving you better explanation and what happened by four people. So it is better to have four, not only one, because each writer, he concentrate in something. As an example, you know, if I now, uh, if I put a picture for you, and let us say you are a teacher, and you have 50 students in the school, 50, not five, like in America. And then you say to each one of them, describe the picture for me. You will see every student describe the same picture differently. Correct? There is someone who noticed something. The other one did not notice it. There is someone he sees something. The others did not see it. There is someone who is so good in details. There is someone who is so good in philosophy. Or let us say, uh, uh, he's giving you more spiritual input. So the four writers, they are giving you more input and that will give you full picture of the story. And a Muslim, he might, you know, try to, to fight the Bible. He might say to you, okay. Uh, like, okay, there's a contradiction. A story says that only when women she saw Jesus. No, it says we. So, you know, if somebody trying to find, to find like a, a, what he called it an error, well, you know, we can solve it easy and we can give you the answer for it. It's very easy. However, for me, it's uh, I'm so glad that we have four Gospels and the four is approved by all the Christians, which is a miracle. You know, because when you have uh, a belief and this belief became so huge, you know, and then you make a believers agree in four books. That is a mission impossible. The Muslims... They have the Quran, but the Quran is not Islam, as you know that. You have to believe in the Hadith and the Quran. And then, if Islam is not based on the Quran only, because most of the rules of Islam is in the Hadith. And the Muslims don't agree about the Hadith. That means Islam does not exist. You will not find one Christian saying, I don't believe in the book of John, or the book of Mark, or the book of Luke, or Matthew. But you will find Muslims denying even the Quran. So when Muslims they say we have one book, I laugh because they don't even have that book. Even this one, the most famous one, Hafs. I don't know, I think you speak Arabic, do you? Because you have an accent. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as long as you speak Arabic, if you open the Arabic Quran, it says that this Quran is according to Riwaya to Hafs. Riwaya to Abi As, Abi Abi Asim. Riwaya, Riwaya, Riwaya. According to, according to, according to, according to, according to. Exactly. According to, according to, according to, according to, according to Uthman, according to the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, but it says Riwaya. You know what Riwaya mean, right? What Riwaya mean? 
a story, like story a narration. To tell, yeah, okay. So it was narration. It was not really a book. So now we are not even taken from Muhammad. We are taking it from somebody exists 200 years after Muhammad. And here you see the hypocrisy of this religion. They say to you that the book of John, as an example, written between like 45 to 60 years after Jesus. So 45 to 60 years, this is what they say or let's say the oldest manuscript, is, is bad, but somebody, he came 600 years, he never met Jesus, he can't talk about Jesus, and then his book itself is written according to, according to, according to, according to, according to, according to Hafs, and Hafs was exist 200 years after Muhammad. In the top of that, do you know what Hafs, do you know, do you know what the Muslims say about Hafs? You know that he's a liar? Uh, li li I don't know, like much, but uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, you can search unreliable, right. basically. You can search right now, which doesn't make sense. But, yeah. but we, we we never learned this beginning. Mm -hmm. I know, but you can search in Google. Hafs can like a Hafs was a liar, and he even he steals books, and even his father is liar more liar than him. This is the most ob opinion of the Islamic scars of him. This is why if you go. In Sahih al-Bukhari, you will not find as a hadith coming from Hafs. <laughs> so you take Quran from him, but you don't take his hadith. Why you don't take the hadith? Because the book. Mm -hmm. you know. So how you accept him? Accept him to be a reporter for the Quran when he is a liar. Right. And anyway, for me, I don't care really if he's a liar or not. The Quran for me in front of me. I, I never knew about the hadith first. I, I I will check the hadith part, and I never knew that it was only the Quran. Like they they quoted him, but uh, it, it's uh, it's another good point that I, well, I will they, definitely check. They say you know he fabricate hadith. And he's I, a, I think I, he's a liar. You know, and now for sure you will find some Muslim. They say to you, no, this is not true, right? But, uh, but and, the, the uh, I think this would be uh, like my, my final question. I, uh, uh, was there any, any let's say in, in the Bible, any reference of any future prophet? This is another uh, argument that uh, it is mentioned that there will become a, a, another prophet in the future uh, to guide the people. And uh, I wanted to know if there is expected from uh, Christianity of another prophet or did they mean okay. Jesus is coming back? Uh, you see, you see. Because uh, the, this is a critical point. Uh, I can right now prophesy about Jesus, but doesn't mean I am a prophet. I can prophesy to you that Jesus is coming soon and then Jesus comes soon. But doesn't mean really I'm a prophet. I'm prophesying, you know, speaking about his coming. And either it's come to be true or it's come to be false. So we do not need the prophets anymore to know Jesus. For Jesus himself, he came to us. The prophets who came after Jesus, let's say the disciples, they prophesy about Jesus. They prophesy about his coming. And some of them, they receive revelation. Those are prophets. But if God, he, you know, he, uh, he, he finds that it's for the benefit of mankind to send a prophet, he will. But for me, I don't see any reason for me to have more prophets because we've been taught everything about Jesus. And you know, the, the Bible speaks about conditions for somebody to claim to be a prophet. First, he had to prophesy in the same, in the name of the same God. Secondly, his prophecies have to come to be true. All of them, not one yes, one no. If he make a prophecy, one prophecy, and it's false, he's a false prophet. Even if he made the prophecies, he made 10 prophecies, nine of them come to be true. One of them can be to be false, he's a false prophet. But for me, why I need a prophet anyway? I mean, I have the Messiah, and, and the disciples, they completed the mission. We have his life, we have his story, and the Lord, he says, whoever believe in me, and I will live. But it says it's completed. Exactly, it's completed as the mission of Jesus to come. And uh, to this is my question. Yeah, when uh -huh. Jesus on the cross, he said it's complete, and this was a prophecy. We're talking about prophecies in the book of Psalm, speaking about a prophecy about Jesus, where it says, uh, 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 Eli, Eli, lema 
which is a prophecy about Jesus. So Jesus says it's completed all the prophecies about me, including that I will be crucified. It's completed, you know. And this is the, the first, let us say, the first step of Jesus on earth, because the second step, which is after the resurrection. And then Jesus, he come and he appeared to the disciples. And even the disciples, you know, they did not believe it is, it's, it's possible, you know, to the point one of the disciples, he asked him to show his hands, you know, like, is that you? You know, because he had nails still, this, the sign of the nails, the person who was crucified. Is that you? You know, so it's not easy to believe that somebody, he was crucified in front of us, and then we take him to a grave or a tomb, and then three days after he come to, back to, to, to us walking alive, the disciple, they witness that, and they question, and they check his hand to see if it's him. And then, not only he have the same look, the same person, the same voice, who they live with him, they spend a long time with him. He did miracles the same as he did before. Nothing changed. The same Messiah who was powerful before is the same Messiah who was power, powerful after. Like now, if somebody came to me and he say, I am the Messiah, how I would know he's not? Or he is. I mean, anyone can claim to be, I am the Messiah. The Messiah, he came once as a, as a man. He will come to, again as a man. So, how I know it's not him? Very simple. The Messiah himself, he gave me the, the guideline. He will come with the glory of his father. So he will come with the glory nobody have ever. And his angels will be surrounding him. So we will see something we never saw before. Nothing to do with normal men. In the same time, the Messiah, he do what Messiah do. His high in quality. His ethic is beyond imagination. His power is amazing. And then the coming of the Messiah is going to be very unique because he will be the judge in the judgment day. So he will come as a judge, which means he will come with the power we did not see before. Before Jesus coming humbly as a man, you can insult him, you can shout at him, you can say whatever you want, but the coming Messiah will come as a king of kings and he is going to judge all mankind. And this is how we recognize him. And even if I was in the time of the uh, uh, in the time of the Messiah, you will notice like as an example the story of the blind man. The blind man when he when Jesus was walking by, he did not say to him, give me food. I mean, he's a blind man. What do you expect from a blind man in the, in, the, in the floor, in the street? He did not say to him, uh, please help me, I need shelter. He said to him, I want to see. Did you, did you ask yourself why in the world somebody is in the street? He said, and he's a blind, he's born blind. I want to see why he want to do that you know is that normal to happen why I want to say I want to see I should ask for something else this is the last thing is expected from a blind man to say because this is nobody can do I mean what what do you mean I want to see this is not even acceptable as a request it's a crazy request so when the Messiah was walking uh, and then the disciple, they said to him, uh, Lord, did this person who is a blind, did he did sin or his parents did sin? The Messiah, he said, he did not born as because of sin, his sin or the sin of his parents, but to show the glory of the Lord by recovering him. And then the Messiah, he healed the person and he made him see. So even the stories which is reporting for us about the Messiah is happening today in this world. There's many people are healed and nobody can explain how they are healed. There's people who they, um, you know, like they experience a miracle, even, even atheists who they are doctors, atheists. When there is something happened to, a, to, to a, a patient and this thing cannot be explained, 
they themselves they use the word miracle. It's a miracle. But he's an atheist. Why he say the word miracle? Because he cannot explain logically how that happened. And this word miracle is used every day by atheists, believers, non-believers. Doesn't matter what is your belief. It's a miracle. Why we use the word miracle? For there is always something we can't explain how it happened. It is above the nature, it is above normal, and it is not usual. And for sure, in the top of that, you can't explain. <clears throat> Anything else? Well, uh... I think I have a, a, like a, yeah, I don't know what to say. Like I, you really mentioned a lot of nice uh, points, and uh, I will definitely uh, I, I'm researching this very heavily, and I decided to call you because I needed the the push basically. Like uh, I feel something is uh, stopping me to learn more about this, and uh, I cannot make decision, of course, uh, right now, but. Uh, I, I think I, I will like have to research more, and I will let you know. Like, I will let you know if, uh, well, if you something know, changes. Well, I, uh, well, hopefully, well, hopefully as soon as possible. Yeah, well, my friend, it's it's up to you. As I said, I don't want to push you to do anything. In Christianity, we believe that faith is something very personal, and it has to be coming from your heart. Uh, I'm not going to promise you heaven if you say it right now, but I say that Lord, the Lord Himself, He said. Whoever believe in me and die will live. That is the promise of the Messiah. So you are an adult, mature, smart, and you know where is your salvation will be. So if you feel like you want to accept the Messiah right now, feel free. If you feel you are not ready, don't, you know. But I say that I might go to sleep and I might not wake up tomorrow. Who knows? Correct? Who knows? I don't know. I might die a second from now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for me, uh, my faith is giving me uh, comfort, security, confidence, and make me a different person. Like me, like now, why am I even sitting with you? I'm here speaking for the last, what, uh, three hours? Or, or two hours and a half. If I don't believe in, in the Messiah, I will be like going somewhere, drinking coffee or watching TV or doing something. I mean, there's many, many more fun things to do than talking to somebody with my respect to you. I do not know, right? I mean, why, why I want to even be talking to you now? Uh, yes, same as the, what you said. Yeah, but because of the Messiah, my friend, I am here to serve you, not to talk to you, not only to talk to you. The Messiah, he says, if you want to be a master, you have to be a servant. I'm not seeking to be a master, but I'm seeking to be a servant. And he washed the feet of his disciples. Washing the feet, that is my Lord, my friend. So with the Messiah, you are a new person. Imagine someone walk in water, someone can make the blind see. Imagine you have such a power. Imagine if you now, people learn about you that you can heal cancer. You will find tens of thousands in front of your, your house willing to die for you because you can bring them back from death. Jesus did not use his power 